we all know that any new drug comes and we are interested, but at the same time, we will talk about theme of this back to basics. Why I'm talking on this is as an intensivist. In the ICU, we get a lot of hypertensive patient and we get multi-drug resistant organism. And we are not talking about that particularly. As we said, basic, back to basics, I mean, back to basics. Here, what is the percentage? As of, we know that the gram positive infection is much less in India is a theme on what we think till now. When I started two and a half decade back, it was only one to 2% we used to think. We all know that hand hygiene, hand washing is one of the important things to stop. And we think about MRSA is not there most of the places, but it is there. If you see South India, it is almost gone to 45%. If you see North India, it is around 30 to 25%. That was the presentation, even if you see 2019 guidelines on Indian AMR as per the data, it has been shown. So to think about all these things, we need to understand why it is important. And at the same time, not going to promote saying that you give it as servers, thanks to Anil sir, saying that you need to have this and uh, we have to understand. Everybody nowadays, we started with the levofloxacin and now we are worried about to give and sparingly we are using it for resistance. This may also get resistance. So we should be more careful that we agree for that as a physicians. And so this is how it is going to cover 360 degrees of uh, the gram positives. We all know gram positive, gram negative as a basic of cell wall, cell membrane, whether it's a ticoplanin, it is having going to be peptidoglycan. So those things, we know the differences, whether it's going to be color differentiated in violet color or not, then we know as a microbiology from that side. But identification of this is important in the ICU, suspicion, because 30% of the patients in ICU will go with the renal failures. And particularly surgical ICUs and medical ICUs are different. So with this, I will go with what is the importance of this. And in 2014 itself, we come to know about glycopeptide intermediate streptococcus aureus, what is important. So this staphylococcus is, because if you have a cluster, you call staphylo, if you have a strips, you call it a strepto. Next. So as I told you that already given the interim saying that factor myth, it's definitely, it's a fact that saying that it's a percentage is definitely an average 33% is having a gram positives and in even medical ICUs. So please do not go by the percentage 72%. 72% is not just because of MRSA. If you compare the line, because we all know that the value of Lancet importance and in 2022 it has published, but 2019 has given. It is not that only MRSA. When you have given the comparison of these drugs utilization of with third generation cephalosporin using this, that is the percentage. Please do not go by the mistake that suddenly going this number this much, is it possible? No, it is not. It is comparing this. So we all know, see, as every one of us here more than 50 years or 60 years, I mean, many of us. So the age and the quality of life and expand, I mean, the expectancy of life has been increasing. Even in India, it has come to 70 plus. So with this, we are having the infections because the comorbidities are going to be high, as Madam was telling about diabetes and other things. And most of us, every fourth person of the world is going to be Indian person of having a diabetic. So with that, the percentage of this is going to be a little high. And what is going to be MRSA widespread and the resistance is because of long-standing disease, age, and renal failure, and having admission in the hospital more times, and having a dialysis catheters. Those kind of things are going to be more and more. That's the reason that you're going to have a more resistance. We all know about it. So we should be more careful about these type of cases. And as I told you, it's an average of 33% in India you're going to have. And that's a, a difference from particularly, if you see from 2016 to 21, and there is a very steep rise as per this uh, ICMR. And nowadays, everybody, I don't say everybody, at least 20% of the people are going for a knee replacement and having a, uh, when particularly in, after COVID, we learned more and more about hand washing, more and more about infectious diseases, much better, even antivirals. So we have very less likely to have a MRSA and having endocarditis, but it is only less than 1%. But if you look at this, the important point I would like to make here is that oral and IV, because most of the antibiotics, both bioavailability is not the same. So whereas here, with the doses, what is they have given, the bioavailability of the tissue is going to be much better. We all know the soft tissue infection we are going to give much. But at the same time, to start with an ICU in a shock patient, you don't have to change the dose and the drug. That is the main importance of this, why we can do this. So that's the reason, the long, because how long you can use it, because it is a better tissue distribution. And this is what Indian uh, staphylococci in uh, problematic infections requiring prolonged therapy, because 
any one of us, if you think about an example of Canada, after, because we don't give a Canada treatment unnecessarily unless it's been uh, stocky. So that time, once it becomes negative of antifungal, you need to give for 14 days. So the duration of therapy is important here. The long duration also can be because you don't need to monitor that either therapeutic level or the drug affection of other organs. So this is what we get particularly for the patients who are being diabetic or uh, CKD and prosthetics, immunosuppressive malignancy. One of the things most is a malignancy where they actually is more particularly if it is, if it is non-MDR, if it is MRSA, this is one of the important drugs which can give. This is the percentage of it in India, what we are going to have. And uh, you require a high efficacy of IV or oral drug is required with, to know, uh, to have a better clinical outcomes. So we know we have a lot of like yesterday, I was talking to one of the senior interns which in Delhi. He said, why MROC, man? We have a lot of uh, antibiotics have come now with uh, good sensitivity and we can actually have go with all these things. So what are the important of this? What, why we can actually, we need to choose, we need not to choose this. Particularly in ICUs, when we have, because as I said, it is a nephrotoxic. And if you see that, uh, vancomycin and ticoplanin, we know, because we cannot give more. The issue here is that, you need to have a therapeutic levels at least two to three days. The shocky patient need to recovery fast. So you cannot wait that much time. That is the reason I would like to think about this. And look at vancomycin. When there's minimal inhibitory concentration creep is there for this. So because understand that there is an intermittent uh, sensitivity is there. And at that time, when you have the drug levels of monitoring when you are doing that, you require more drug to act on because if you have a sensitivity, it will come down. So that is the one thing which you have to think about it. So. If you look at uh, the linozolid, we all know that this is one of the important aspects of thrombocytopenia. So you cannot use for a long time. So you keep it in mind in that. And serotonin syndrome, not regularly, but we can think about it. So even though it is working for these kind of things. So then you go for the next drug, think about adaptomycin. Here, when you are using adaptomycin, you need to monitor CPK levels because it has a skeletal muscle toxicity. So after some time. So that is another important point, what you have to keep it in mind when you think about adaptomycin, you can give it. So then think about a tigicycline. It is a bacterial stactic activity and uh, there's no oral formulation even if you want to change once the patient becomes stabilization and you want to shift the patient. So this is why even clindamycin, it has its own C. diff because we know one of the important aspects in ICU for long standing patients, the development of C. diff is important. You have to think about it when you have the area more than three times a day. Then keep it in mind and more than a week of the hospital administration. So that's the reason that why I'm thinking about this. Otherwise, it's not that other drugs are not useful. They are very good. They can be used. But keep these points in the mind before you choose. So the advantage of, see, whenever you want, I know, we know everybody wants ideal things. But what is ideal? Ideal means these are the things we wanted. We want to have a rapid bactericidal filling we need. And we need an excellent tissue penetration. We need a pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics, which allows the predictable dosing of the patient for the drug and low potential for the development of resistance while on therapy, because that's one of the important and AMR, which has been and studied in 2,204 countries for more than a year. And uh, they have been published more than 12,000 patients. And the AMR is important, which has been published. I think all physicians know about it. So the, you need low side effect profile, and you need to demonstrate clinical and microbiological efficacy, and they should have excellent biofilm penetration. We all know the formation of biofilm, when you put a center line, when you have a lines, the formation of biofilm, you cannot break it. So what is useful, beneficial, the breaking of biofilm is important to act the antibiotic at the site of infection or where the pus is there. So and the availability of oral and IV. So, and if you see in MROC, they actually had a three phases of trials, particularly in uh, India. And whereas US they have done, for some reasons they did not do phase two, phase three trials. I have come to know later on when I talk to them. And with this, it is definitely the first ever IV oral bactericidal and it's going to be one of the good anti-MRSA antibiotic. And I'm maybe definitely sure in future because if you see any ICU in, in other countries, gram negative is more, more percentage. And the death is going to be, uh, mortality rate is high. So that is why they don't focus on gram positives much. And I don't want to say this is Vajrayudam, but at the same time, I would like to say that it's going to work on all these pathogens, except because these are important to keep it in mind because if other antibiotics do work. I'm not saying that, but at the same time, you look at it because in the pause of time of only 10 minutes, I would like to say that 
this is going to work on everything about like you have a resistance mechanism and staphylococci what is having and if you have enterobacteria because you got from the gut to the community acquired because we know the atypical whenever you are giving atypical organism are going to be there for pneumonia those kind of patients you want to start and immediately to start most of the times whether you have a therapeutic you have a prophylactic you have a duration of time all these things when you do so this is why the importance of anywhere whether you can come from the streptococci and you can come from the staphylococci so what is going to be that all these pathogens are working better than levonorfloxacin because in that also another important point is that the metabolite when it comes to the active metabolite how much time it is going to say how active it is going to be there i think every as a physician we know the pharmacology how it is going to be there so this drug which is having it is having a unique structure and it is a broad spectrum coverage of gram positive i would like to keep with a pinch of salt that i am telling again and again stressing that in multi drug resistant gram negative it is not going to work but all other is going to work because that's what i want to say that i don't want to say that this is going to work for everywhere but that keep it in mind but the other way everywhere it will work and it has a dual action on dna gyrase and uh, so you see that it has a easier switch to iv to oral and the same thing i am reiterating that saying that it eradicates biofilm and i'm not talking that is going to eradicate mdr or gram negative but it is eradicate this and rapid bactericidal action and it has a better tissue penetration and dose adjustment in hepatic and renal repellent is not required so this is what another important point to keep it in mind and please understand it is a superior safety particularly whenever you give a drug you look at the drug drug interaction you look at other organs effect and uh, there is no qt prolongation like other what i previously told you when you are thinking about don't need to keep it in because previous just two talks before the found atrial fibrillation and the cardiac problems the other senior doctor was talking about so it is suitable for long term use so this is a coverage of uh, vancomycin for gram positive and uh, there is a global surveillance was done for uh, um, almost uh, more than 4000 worldwide isolates and you look at it leave on i just want to say that minimum inhibitory concentration of 90 and 50 normally there is something called this is we have a u cost and l e c l i s so this is where the european level of antibiotic microbial will they look at the mic they decide in india we don't do it they will decide they will test and they will manage saying that what is mic level of that because if the more than minimum inhibitory concentration of 90% growth is been stopped or and it's been either sidle it's killing the size of like when you see the growth no the size of should not be increased when you put in the agar plate so bha plate like brain uh, tissue perfusion where you have the put agar plate when you put 1 ml or uh, this vancomycin when they studied also whether it's less than 10 ml or less than 19 mm that's what decides and says that whether this growth is been hampered mic, mic level so the mic level and break point it gives almost five times of the mic level is given to the break point so when the break point is there most of the times it is guaranteed that it is going to work on the tissue level and penetration that's what the, how it says about mic level and uh, break point and this is been studied in america also in the first phase itself is what is going to be the benefit of uh, levels of this one so this is the sensitivity level and the intermittent sensitivity and resistance levels so the, when is more than 8 mg per liter is there then is going to be resistance so that's what you say that so you have you know like look at the mic level and requirement is only double that means 0.5 to 1 is required to have a 90 whereas here you look at levofloxacin 0.25 that means almost 16 times more is required to have a 90% of uh, mic so this is what our uh, dr balaji virdavan one of the famous uh, microbiologists been studied from cmc vellu the potency evaluation of mrock by dr balaji and uh, you look at it here that when you have that again as i told you previously it's only two times like 0.5 to 1 or uh, 0.25 to 0.5 the susceptibility is 100 compared to any other drug what is it? i understand people will talk about others but depends on it is not any uh, isolate study it is not any uh, i don't talk about a randomized control study but this is what has been studied by themselves and which is actually uh, confidential so the broad spectrum activity as i told you that it 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 works on most of the organisms here what is going to be working so look at the organism what is going to cover it has been published in 2016 and 2020 and by 2019 all three have been because they have studied how important it is and the susceptibility of this organism has been shown so please understand if the term has come from more than 6 uh, to 8 years so the vancomycin resistance or glycopeptide uh, intermittent sensitivity when they have against working about this one you look at the gyrase as i told you the mechanism of action what's working 
And you look at that vancomycin resistance and how much it is going to be different from the levonorgoplasmin of 0.5. So this is what I would like to say. Other things have also been working, but the level of this VRSA and the vancomycin sensitivity is much, much better. And there's no impact of vancomycin non-susceptible on MRAC activity. So this is just to reiterate the, what are the important points of MRSA for MRAC. So these are the things which are very, very useful, including the anaerobes. And because I'd like to give two minutes of talk at the end of the questions for shared persons also. And you look at it, the highly active agonist, difficult to diagnose atypical respiratory patterns. Because when you cover, you need to add other for the atypicals, but you don't need to add atypical again, another drug, the single drug is going to be effective and useful. But I'm, I'm worried, even though they say that it is not going to have a resistance, maybe uses of more and more times, it may develop a resistance over a period of time is the worry, but they have their intermediate, they are not sending it, it's not over the counter drug. That's the one thing I believe that at present of time, I do not know much, maybe you have more practical experience. So it's superior to that of levofloxacin, that is actually 100% guaranteed. So if you see the lung penetration and it's going to be, what is there, they have shown it here, I'll go back. So the extracellular, extra lung fluid, where it is there, achieves the best in class lung, extra lung fluid concentration, that is more than the three times of the levofloxacin. That is what is going to be useful, particularly if you have a pneumonia. So the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, I was telling you, this is what is how the absorption occurs. The Alanivonadafloxacin is absorbed with the help of amino acid transport in the intestine short, that is, you know about the CMAX, and rapid complete conversion active drug by the action of estrogens. Approximately 90%, and that's another important point, whether first phase or second phase is going to be in crossing oral IV. So the excretion is through blood and urine, so okay, through both urine and feces, okay. The minimal role of renal pathway, that is why we can use it in a, a renal failure as well. And there's no change of the dose as can be done also. The volume distribution is good because particularly in sepsis, in hypotensive patients, the volume distribution changes in ICU. That's another way of it's going to be useful. And the hepatic phase two conjugative metabolism. As I was telling you previously that the level of eight milligrams per liter, whatever dose you give, whether you give 1,000 milligrams BAD oral or 800 IV BAD, so the, the level in the serum is above eight always. You look at it, even if the peak concentration has come in, but the level is above. So that means the, the action on the, all this uh, gram positive organism is going to work much better because it's going to be sidal as well as more than mic levels of my 90 is going to affect work better. So it is 90% bioavailability and there is a better intestinal amino acid transportation mediated efficient absorption happens. So the unique combination of high lung concentration, I was telling you previously how it's going to be extra lungular fluid and important of this. And it is going to work through this and it's been 2018 February they have been published and how important it was. And the MROC level, and if you look at the percentage of how much is going to be staying in the lung and that's what is important. So there is no alveolar macrophage because when you are working on this in infection conditions, that is important here. The other clinically relevant features of MROC are, the another one important on this slide would put into your mind is that most of the antibiotics, they work as antibiotics, it's okay, but it has a very good inhibition of pro-inflammatory cytokines, so anti-inflammatory also. This one point I would like to put into saying that, okay, this is important. So when you look at it, the eradicates MRSA biofilm, this is what they studied and shown that the other antibiotics has been shown in microscope, showing how much the eradication has been happening and the, how reduction of the bacteria has been coming to this. So this is what infections when uh, in a diverse support infections of clinical features strongly, the clinical and non-clinical features are, these are important particularly when you are using it as I told you in the defective way of uh, previous also. So the national surveillance program has been done in MROC by previously ICMR has been done in GIPMR they have studied and they've shown almost 23 major hospitals across India has been submitted to the regional cephalococcal isolates to GIPMR and isolates to be categorized using the approved MROC susceptibility breakpoint. This is what a study in Pioneer, uh, that's called Pioneer study, when in the event of monitoring multicentric MROC uh, retrospective study has been studied. So they have shown that indicators for the prescribing MROC and how much percentage and what is the effect of the frequency, how important of bloodstream infections and uh, septicemia cases have been studied. And this is what the study details are in almost major all the uh, bigger countries, bigger cities that have been studied over 98 sites and 117 investigations with seven chief investigations with 1,229 patient data. 
So this is what the, the benefit of success and failure, you can see that it's not the even you have seen only 0 to 100 if properly done, the difference between the resistance or the clinical outcomes in the percentage was much, much, much beneficial. And the adverse events are very, very, very less because the only nine subjects received only, only reported that the commonly things are this is the one. So this is what, this is my last slide. So the no infusion related with excellent GA tolerability and no need of uh, drug, I mean therapeutic monitoring and ease of administration and 95% susceptibility and no dose changes required for renal and hepatic. So this is what again reiterating of this and this is important thing of timeline. We all know that getting a new antibiotic is not easy and gram negative antibiotics uh, may getting some but gram positive antibiotics since many many years it has not come after 2007, now only we got it uh, MROC. So levonorgofloxacin, which is uh, uh, patients definitely are benefited, but choose the patient right. As we all know that pharmacology, right dose, right route, right patient, that is one thing we should be saying. And contemporary solution for contemporary patient, this is what is doing. Thank you very much for your patient listening.